break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, 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 break every chain. Thank you so much, worship team, for leading us in worship. You've done an amazing job. And thank you also for praying for us. Welcome again to this segment for 10 years and above. And we are glad that you could join us and you're looking forward to an exciting time together. My name is June Dungo from Sitam Valley Road. And with me is... Natalie Mumbe from Sitam Buruburu. And... Nathan Baraka from Sitam Moodley. Karibuni sana. So please grab your pen. Grab your Bible and grab your notebook because there's a lot to learn today and you need to write some of those things that you're going to be talking about this, this morning. Now, what did we learn last week? Do you remember? Were you in class? Good. Why don't, Nathan, what do you remember? I remember that we learned about Jesus coming the storm and our memory verse came from the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, which says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wow, thank you so much for hiding God's word in your heart. Boys and girls at home, please make sure you hide God's word in your heart. That's the power that you have to call upon the word of God when you're facing a difficult circumstance. So please make sure you memorize the scriptures as we are learning them. Now, Natalie, what did you, you, did you learn and what did you um, apply from last week's lesson? That Jesus has power over nature and you should not be afraid of anything. Yes, we shouldn't be afraid of anything. Indeed, Jesus has power over nature and he has power over all the storms in our lives. And all we need to do is call upon him to still the storms in our life. So there's nothing to fear because Jesus is more powerful even than nature or any circumstance in our lives. Now we continue in the series of Jesus Christ's miracles. And today we want to learn about yet another amazing miracle of Jesus Christ. Now before we begin, we want to learn what are demons? Because we're going to talk about them today. Nathan, what is a demon? What do you understand? I understand that a demon is an evil spirit that comes to torment us and makes our lives uncomf uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Yes, they come and make our lives miserable. Not even just uncomfortable. What about you, Nath uh, Natalie? What do you think? To me, demons are things which possess people and mm -hmm. make them do bad stuff. Yeah, they possess people and make people do bad stuff. And because they're spiritual beings, we cannot see them. And they actually have power to come and control us. So, should we be afraid of demons or should demons be afraid of us? What do you think there at home? 
those listening to me this morning, do you think demons are more powerful than you or are you more powerful than demons? Okay. Nathan, what do you think? I think the demons are, are afraid of me. They're afraid of you? Yes. Why should they be afraid of you? Because I have power over them. Okay, that's interesting. Natalie? I think demons should be afraid of us because we have faith and mm. we believe in Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah. These guys here are not afraid of demons, but maybe somebody somewhere is afraid of demons and evil spirits. Because things that we fear are things that are more powerful than us, things that we cannot control and actually threaten our well-being or, you know, things about us or our very existence. So indeed, demons are there and they are powerful and they do affect us. Actually, demons are angels who are fallen and they're the ones who work in cahoots with the devil. They're actually the devil's messengers. And we know the scheme of the devil. From uh, John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. So that is the realm of the evil spirits. That's what they plan to do in our lives. So we should be afraid of them. However, let's learn a bit more. Because if they have power, we need to find out who has more power than the evil spirits. Because actually, um, Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 12 says that we do not wrestle against uh, flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against spiritual forces of evil in, this, in the heavenly realms. So the devil and his demons are real. However, Jesus has power over them. And that's what you're going to see from les our lesson today. Our lesson today is we will see how Jesus healed a boy with an evil spirit. And our Bible verses come from uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 17 to 29. And Natalie will read for us from verse 17 to 22. And then Nathan will read for us from verse 23 to 29. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son, who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it teases him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, by, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. I'll be reading from verse 23, which says, If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never return in him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him up by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, This kind can come out only by prayer. Wow. Thank you so much, Natalie and Nathan, for reading for us so well. Uh, let's uh, look into these verses and make some several observations, and we'll look at the several characters who are here. We have the character of the disciples. We'll see how they responded to the evil spirit. Then we have the father of the boy. We'll see how did he respond to the evil spirit. And then we also see how Jesus responded to the evil spirit. From the obs observing how they did, then we'll determine how should we then respond to evil spirits. Okay, so um, Natalie, how do you see the disciples responding to the evil spirits? The disciples did not believe so they were not able to remove the 
evil spirits from the boy. Yes, actually, uh, Jesus said it's because they did not believe. That's why they were not able to remove the evil spirit from the boy. Yes, and what about the father? What did you see from the father? Um, the father brought his boy to be healed. He believed that Jesus could do it, but the Bible tells us he also had a bit of unbelief. Yes, he had a bit of unbelief, but what did Jesus respond to him? What did Jesus tell him? Jesus said, anything is possible for them who believe. And then the father said, if I believe, but help my unbelief. Amen. So the father did believe, but he had uh, some issue of doubt as well. And what was Jesus' response, Natalie? What did Jesus tell the evil spirit? Jesus commanded the spirits and the spirits came out of the boy. Yeah, Jesus spoke to that spirit and called it, you deaf and mute, you mute and deaf, dumb spirit, come out of this boy. And what did the spirit do? The spirit had no option. It tried to convulse and you know, make this boy dead, but eventually it actually came out. And Jesus picked this boy up and raised him and made him stand and, st and he stood and he was alive again. So the spirit has no power when Jesus spoke. Jesus spoke to the spirit and all the spirit had to do was take off and run away. That's the power Jesus had. He has power over the evil spirits. Isn't that amazing? Yes. yes. It's so amazing. But now, what is my response in light of what you've seen in these verses? What should my response to the evil spirit be? Nathan. Um, this, yes, we can overcome, but Jesus said we need to believe. We need to believe. And who are we believing in? God. God. We need to believe in God. So our faith needs to be based on God who has power over the evil spirit. And um, what was Jesus' response to the disciples uh, when he asked them, when they came to him and asked, why weren't we able to remove the demon? What did Jesus t tell them? Jesus said that this kind can only come out by prayer. Yes, this kind comes out only by prayer. So prayer is very significant in this case. So what kind of prayer is Jesus referring to? Uh, Nathan, read for us James chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. The Bible says, And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Wow. So it talks about uh, James 5 verse 15 and 16 talks about prayer. And it says prayer offered in faith will make a sick person well. So that's, we see two things here. There's prayer offered in faith will make a sick person well. Then verse 16 says the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. So we see three things here. There is prayer, there is faith, and there is righteous. Because we all want to have powerful and effective prayer. I'm sure this is what the disciples wanted to do, that they could speak to this demon and it will fly. It will run away. But what we are required is to pray. Pray with faith and in, uh, in, in righteousness. So let's ask ourselves, what is faith? Natalie, read for us Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It says, no faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Yes, faith is confidence in what we hope for and an assurance of what we do not see. So it's a complete uh, belief that whatever you've prayed about will happen without any shadow of doubt. So for example, if I want a million shillings, who can I ask a million shillings from? The president. The president. You're sure when you ask the president for a million shillings, I have this project, I need to do this and that, it would not be a problem for him to give you a million shillings. You know for sure the president has a million shillings. So even us, when we go to God, we need to know for sure. Whatever we are asking God for, it is done. It is sealed. It's a done deal. There's no shadow of doubt. God will do it. That is what faith is. Even when you've not seen it, we need to believe it. That is the faith that we have in God. That is the faith that we need to have. Secondly, it talks, the verse, uh, James talks about righteousness. Okay, so let, let's ask, what is righteousness? Nathan, read for us Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. 
the Bible says, Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Yes, when Abraham believed, God credited him as righteousness. So the key word here is believed. Believed is also the same as having faith in. Okay, so Abraham believed God. Abraham had faith in God. He believed God, he obeyed God he, because he believed in God. And because of that, God credited to him as righteousness. So even today, me and you, if we believe God, if we believe Jesus Christ and accept him into our hearts, it is credited to us as righteousness. We receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ and we become righteous. That means when we pray with faith and we are righteous, our prayers are powerful and effective. Isn't that amazing? Yes. So if we believe and do not have any doubt, anything is possible for us. Even talking to demons and then, them fleeing from us. On that note, let's look at James chapter 4 verse 7. Natalie, please read it for us. It says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and you'll flee away from you. So what do you get from this verse? When we give ourselves to God, and you feel the evil spirit to come mm. inside us. He will, f he will flee away from us and will not have a choice. But yes, he doesn't have a choice. When we submit ourselves to God, we need to understand what submitting ourselves to God is. Submitting means coming under the authority, under the covering. So you submit to somebody and obey them. So when we submit ourselves to God and God becomes our Lord and Savior, he comes and takes over our lives. We are hidden in God. We are hidden in Christ in God. We are there uko, dani, dani, dani kabisa. So when the devil comes, we have power. All we have to do is resist him. In the same way, Jesus told the, the, the demon in this boy to come out. We also tell the devil, get away from us. We tell the evil spirits, depart from me, you evil damn spirit. Get away from me. What does the, the demon do or the devil? He has no choice. He has to flee. He has to run away because you have the power and authority that you have in God. So the demon has absolutely no power over you. So we must not fear the devil or his demons. So long as we are in Jesus Christ, we are submitted to God. Now, Nathan, read for us uh, 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. The Bible says, You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. So who is in you? God is in me. How is God in you? Because I accepted him. So when you accept Jesus Christ, he comes into your life. He comes and takes residence in your life and, be, and he comes to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is in you. He's the one who's greater than he who is in the world. Who is in the world? The devil is in the world. Yes, the devil is in the world. So greater is he that is in you, who is God, than he that is in the world. So the same power that Jesus had when he was speaking to the evil spirit and telling it to depart is the same power you have that is resident in you. So all you have to do is believe and tell this evil spirit, depart from me. That's what we get in this verse. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But maybe you can ask yourself, what are some of the circumstances that the evil one uses to come into our lives, to torment us and make our lives miserable? Or what are the things that come into our lives to open the door for the evil one to harass us? Nathan, what do you think? I think bad company. Bad company? Yes, you can actually uh, be moving with people who do not believe in God and who have maybe no regard for God. And they make you then pull away from God, pull away from that covering of God. And you're exposed and the devil can come and torment you. What about you, Natalie? What do you think? The music that you listen to mm -hmm. and the stuff that you watch. The stuff that you watch. Yes, maybe you're watching some um, content that is not right. Maybe there's some music you're listening to that doesn't glorify God. Music that talks about the devil and maybe makes you believe that the devil has more power. 
Maybe, in fact, I remember there was a story of this boy who was listening to some kind of music that was telling him to commit suicide and to kill himself. The boy actually went and killed himself. That's how the devil works, even through the music, even through some of the content that you're watching online. There are things that do not glorify God, things that pull us away from that covering that God has given us. So we need to be careful who we open our lives to. Who are we opening in the things we are reading? Maybe the things we are watching, maybe the things we are listening to. We need to guard ourselves that the devil has no foothold in our lives because we are under the covering of the Lord Jesus Christ. So maybe what should be the solution? What would you advise your, your young people out there? What should they do? Um, for you to overcome, just like we've read today, we need to believe and have faith. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What about you, Natalie? What do you say? You should believe and always think, be mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. um, when you're going in anything, uh, anything, pray to God. We pray. So, for example, if you're tempted to do anything that is wrong, you can pray and ask God, help me. In the same way the, the, father's, uh, uh, the boy's father said, help me. I believe, help my unbelief. You can actually ask God to help you and help you come out of that temptation. Uh, now, other things we can do is also have faith in God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 16 says that if we, be, we need to believe in God and believe that he exists and that he rewards those who honestly seek him. So we should honestly seek God and believe in him, and he will help us. Also, we need to believe and surrender our, our lives totally to God. And that we see also in um, James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, submit to God. So we need to surrender our lives completely to God. We also need to depend on God completely. In James chapter 15, verse 5, it says that Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. We are connected to God and we need to con remain connected to him because outside of him we cannot do anything. That's what the word of God says. And also lastly, we need to have confidence in God. We must have confidence in God. Second uh, uh, Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says that um, we've not been given a spirit of fear but a spirit of power, of love and a sound mind. So we need to believe completely that, that that is a spirit that is operating in us. We should not have any kind of fear. Now, the power that we have over the devil or the demons or the evil spirit only comes from God when God comes into our hearts. So if you do not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you do not have this power over the devil. So if you're out there and you want to have not fear the devil and have power over him like Natalie and Nathan. You can invite Jesus Christ into your heart to become your Lord and Savior. And if you're out there and you want to pray this prayer, pray after me. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. I confess my sins to you and ask you to please forgive me. I believe that you died on the cross for the forgiveness of sins and for the forgiveness of my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And if you have prayed this prayer, Jesus Christ has become your Lord and Savior. And you, have no, you should not have any concern for fear for the devil. Because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Now, should we fear the devil and these demons? No. no. Because we have God in us. Our memory verse tells us, which comes from James chapter 4 verse 7 says, 1, 2, 3. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Let's say that again. James chapter 4 verse 7. It says, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That is a promise from the word of God. So we need to be covered by God for us to have power over the evil one. So let's close our lesson today in prayer and we'll ask Natalie to pray for us uh, where at times we may fear or we may doubt that God will give us the power and to remind us to submit ourselves to God, resist the devil and he will flee from us. Pray for us, Natalie. Let's go ahead for our prayer. 
Oh my Father God, you came before you this morning, oh my Father. Thank you for helping us do this lesson, oh my Father. For those who are listening, oh my Father, that you're going to help me and protect them, oh my Father. For those people who have already believed in Jesus, you're going to be there and protect them, oh my Father. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Natalie. Now we've come to the end of our lesson today, but please remember we have homework. So please go to your uh, CITAM website and download the work. There are verses there for you to read and then write down what God is speaking to you every day. And it's along, just building along our lesson today so that we learn to know that we have power over the devil because we have Jesus Christ in our lives. Okay. Amen. So thank you very much boys and girls, for joining us from, for this lesson. We give glory to God for a wonderful time. Have you enjoyed this lesson? Yes. Yes, it's been good. So we want to say bye for now. Until next time, God bless you. Bye. Bye. bye.